It's summer of 2014 and OnePlus is ruling the news feeds with its wacky launch of the OnePlus One. The launch itself involving an invite system was arguably more interesting than the device itself, which was a cut down Oppo device running a streamlined and heavily customizable version of Android called CyanogenMod. At $300, it was the dawn of what would be an entire subcategory of smartphones, dubbed the flagship killers. The idea was simple, make a phone that's as fast as the best, but that costs as little as possible while preserving quality in areas like build and display. After a couple more launches, the company would blossom into a brand that did things differently, catering to enthusiasts and with community-led changes to the mainstream smartphone formula. OnePlus would go on to become one of the best Android makers out there, even if it didn't sell the most units and dominate the market share. But what OnePlus did is make a bold statement with its products, and in a world where LG, Samsung, Huawei and HTC were deviating from what Android fans really desired with their bloated software and restricted performance, it was stripping back all of that blow and instead delivering Android performance. Over the next 10 years, OnePlus would chop and change its formula to meander its way through an increasingly Samsung and Apple dominated market. It tried futuristic high-end hardware, it tried adding software features where early OnePlus just wouldn't have dared, and as the market changed, it too switched its strategy. And as the prices went up, the Xiaomi-derived Poco brand would pop up, catching the flagship killer customers with devices like the F1 and the F2 Pro. Fast forward 10 years and pretty much every phone is quick now, even the cheaper offerings. Heck, ARM performance has become so good, we're now making really solid laptops with the things. So with speed being a non-issue, what can a company really do to make its phones unique? After all, OnePlus seems to be making great phones with its 12 and open, but those are decidedly mainstream in their formula. Enter nothing a young company founded by Carl Pei, co-founder of OnePlus. It's bit style. From the initial launch of the Ear One True Wireless Earbuds, Nothing's clear brand identity is bringing unique designs to the mainstream, and its debut phone, aptly named the Phone One, made headlines with its flat sides, unique LED matrix on the back that reacted in different ways depending on the phone's status, and software that harkens back to the stripped down, minimalist experience we once enjoyed with early OnePlus smartphones. But with Nothing's signature dot matrix design hints throughout the operating system, skin. The thing is that OnePlus's initial clean OS style stood out because other skins like TouchWiz, LG UX and so on were bloated and really slowed phones down so there was a clear reason to go with OnePlus if you were an enthusiast. These days though most phones are quick enough for performance to be a complete non-issue and while software is as feature rich as it is right now with AI all over the place, first party options for stuff like health tracking, photo apps and so on completely filling up most smartphones, even the cheapest devices don't tend to really crawl like the old phones used to. So nothing's thing is style, and that's clear to see as since its debut devices, this theme has persisted in its newer earphone models, as well as its second and third installments in its phone lineup. And this hasn't necessarily been a horrific strategy in terms of sale figures, with the hyper niche smartphone brand claiming to have sold at least six figures of all three of its released smartphones, but those aren't massive numbers. Nothing's sub-brand, CMF, is all about bringing style to the low end, with its recent debut phone, also called the Phone One, raising eyebrows across the industry, with its switchable backs, attachable accessories, and a crazy low price for a phone in 2024. Again, the whole focus is style, and that certainly stands out as phones get more samey with glass backs and metal rails, or faux glass and faux metal. This one might not be the fastest, nor take the best photos, but it does make a statement with its aesthetic. And I have to give props where due in Nothing's other products. Its Ear One caught the attention of many with its unique design really showcasing that whole dot matrix light and transparency thing that they had going on. But when reviews surfaced showing that its sound tuning was a little bit off, the company reached out to its critics for feedback and listened. Nothing released the considerably better Ear 2 to much acclaim when it came to sound quality, even if the battery life still needed a bit of work. 
There are really two ways to look at nothing in CMF. A, it's great to have competition and variety in an ever plain smartphone market, and hopefully the funky design ideas will inspire diversity from other brands. And B, that this whole statement that nothing is making with its devices is far more surface level than what OnePlus did back in the day. And both ideas can be simultaneously true because nothing in CMF's wacky design thing clearly is less practical and useful than the genuinely wanted speedy and streamlined OnePlus of old. But if you're making phones stand out with removable and swappable backs, interesting colors and expandable storage, where's the headphone port that many people still cry out for? And if you wanna make a statement, make it with intent, go the whole hog. Don't get me wrong, more competition in the low end and the mid range markets is absolutely needed. And I like what nothing in CMF has sort of doing here, but especially the former's devices in the 1, 2 and the 2A, they feel like one trick ponies. Great, so they can light up and have a decent Android launcher on them. What else? After a week, the novelty wears off and you end up with phones that aren't exactly crazy practical compared to the competition with removable batteries or headphone ports that really could make them stand out, but also aren't of particular quality standards that can't be met by other companies, whether that be the screens, the cameras, the build, or the battery life. What I wanna see from nothing is a bold statement. We're offering eight years of Android updates. Our phones now have a headphone port. I mean, I guess they kind of did that with the Sunbird collaboration to bring blue bubbles to Android with nothing chats. And that would have been absolutely huge if they'd have pulled it off. Imagine just how many people would buy a phone that's two or $300 less than an iPhone just to have iMessage in the US. But that did blow up in Nothing's face when reports surfaced that Nothing Chat and Sunbird were transporting messages unencrypted, despite claiming otherwise on their sites. And the media had a field day. Subsequently, the Nothing Chats app has been pulled from the Play Store until further notice, and we've ironically heard nothing in the eight months since. OnePlus was really in the right place at the right time with its flagship killers and software that proved that you could have a fast, fluid Android experience when the big names phones clearly had performance flaws. The company persevered and now we have arguably the best Android on the market in the 12, even if it's not outselling Samsung's or Apple's handsets. If nothing had pulled off that iMessage integration, it could have had a massive impact, especially in the US, and made a proper name for itself on the big stage where non-techie people would suddenly start to think about the nothing brand. But as it stands, it has yet to really have that catalyst and will slowly continue pushing its name into the public consciousness. What do you make of Nothing and CMF? I, I'm kind of split on them. I think they have real potential, but the surface level features just keep me from recommending them to anyone other than really a diehard Android fan. The Ear 2 is pretty cool, and I'd be interested in trying one of those sets out as an audio fan, but also as someone who just wants to try another set of true wireless buds. Let me know what you think of the brand and maybe the buds 2 in particular in the comments section. And while you're down there, please do hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss another upload. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Cheers.